Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com. Welcome to another video of our XUnit with Selenium video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about how we could actually make use of the XUnit to perform data-driven testing, but in a more uh, unified fashion uh, by overcoming this particular lot of attribute to be used on a particular theory test to uh, just a streamlined way of working with it. So there are three ways you could actually do it. The one we have seen this one, and there is another way which is gonna be loading the data from a property on a test class, or there is a another way which is nothing but loading the data from a class on a test class property. So there are three ways that we could do it, but uh, the one which I'm gonna be doing the most simplest way, uh, which we are gonna be doing is using uh, an attribute called as member data. Uh, so this member data of X unit is very important to uh, help us do that. Uh, so I will tell you what I really mean. So first of all, I will introduce you this attribute called as member data. And you can see that this member data attribute is nothing but it provides a data source for the data theory with the data coming from one of the following sources. It can be a static property, it can be a static field, or it can be a static method with the parameters. So this is what I was talking about. This is what we're gonna be achieving. So this member must return something compatible with the I enumerable of object array. So this is very, very important. So if you try creating your own object, it doesn't really work. Uh, so we have to be a bit more specific on that. And caution, the property is completely enumerated by two list before any test is written. So hence, uh, it should return independent object sets. That is very important. That's a caution they have mentioned. So uh, before we actually get into the uh, member data itself, let's try writing an I enumerable object uh, and let's try doing that. So for doing that, I'm actually gonna jump into our Exit Automation website over here. And there is something called as uh, probably register where we have username, password, confirm password, and email. So let's, why not just try automating this piece? Uh, so this was actually the class fixture um, for, uh, so probably it's gonna be test login uh, with fill data. Uh, I'm gonna probably just use exactly the same idea. I'm gonna paste it over here. Uh, and this is gonna be, once again, theory, but it is gonna be register, test, register. Click the register link. And once we click this register link, we're gonna be presented with the username, password, and there is gonna be uh, two more fields, which is gonna be confirm password and email. So the confirm password is gonna be confirm password, uh, which I'm gonna be entering as, uh, let it be for now, yeah. Uh, we're gonna change this eventually. And then we're gonna enter what is called as email. So the email is gonna be uh, by ID of email. Yeah, I think this is fine. We don't really have to click any button. So once it is done, we're gonna say test completed. Uh, and as you know, this test is complying as it says that the theory method must have a test data. So we are gonna be creating a member data for now and we need some member to have those datas. So for doing that, we are gonna be creating what is called as an public static i enumerable because that's what member data requires to have us, uh, which has got an object array of what is called as a data. So I'm just gonna create a Lambda expression uh, this time so that you'll understand what I really mean. And I'm gonna create a list because that's what it says. It should be of a list of type. Uh, and I'm gonna say new object, uh, which is gonna hold things for us. So it's gonna be, uh, so we know that it's gonna, we require a username, password, confirm password and email. So I'm gonna say the username as Karthik password as uh, probably card password, uh, something like that. And then we also require the confirmation password, which I'm probably gonna you know, copy, paste it over here. And the email is gonna be karthik at uh, gmail.com, who cares? Um, that's it, that's number one. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna copy it over here, and we're gonna say Prashant. Uh, and it's gonna be Prashant's password. 
uh, and this is going to be Prashant password as well. And it's going to be Prashant at gmail.com. Cool. I'm done. So this way we could see that we could able to create things uh, like two arrays, which is all good. So now we have two datas that we can actually enter while registering this particular user. So these are the two different data types or data uh, value that we are going to be enumerating while trying to register a user. So now we're going to go to this member data and within this member data, we are going to call this particular data that we have written, which is nothing but the data that we have created. So I'm going to call the name of and I'm going to call the I enumerable of data. So you can see that once I do that, for some reason, this intelligence is super annoying. Um, so this is the data which I was talking about. So once we have this data over here, you can see it has uh, the compliant is gone, but the parameter is actually not matching. Uh, it is not just the username and password we are passing in. We also need to pass what is called as the string of uh, the password, which is something but for the confirm password and string of email so that it could be able to pass the email details as well. These are the two things which we need to pass. And we need to remove this uh, details that we have already entered here and then let's replace these values. So you can see we now have a bit of change in our code, uh, which is going to have a member data and it's going to have a name of the data is over here, but it is an I enumerable of data that we are passing. So let's try running this test as well. Let's quickly do that. So if I try to build this project, let's see the test explorer is intelligent enough to tell us that there are two tests. There you go. It is intelligent. It tells me that there are two data data that I need to pass in. One is Karthik. Another one is Prashant which is quite cool. Now let's try to run this test. Let's see what's going to happen. So it should uh, open the browser for us over here. There you go. It entered the Karthik and the Prashant as well, like two datas has been entered and the test card passed, which is cool. So this is another way of working with our datas within uh, within uh, X unit to see how we can actually leverage the power of data itself. So now you can ask me, why can't we just create a strongly typed class? Probably instead of object array, we can type create our own uh, class and then pass it and work with it. Doesn't really work because it has to be the member data must have to be of type object array. If not, that's not going to work. Uh, and that's the reason you, sh you should be using the object array over here and you need to pass the parameters like that. And there is also another attribute just for your additional information, something like a class data. So you can see there is something called as class data and it provides the same kind of operation, but just that it is going to be coming from a class uh, instead of the properties in the same class property, but it's from the different class property. Uh, and again, it should be implementing the I enumerable of the object. Uh, so that's what it is going to be doing as well. So pretty much like the member data, but instead of the member, the property that we have created over here, it is going to be coming from a different class for the class data. That's it guys. This is how we can work with the uh, data in X unit. Now next video, we'll see how we could run this tests in parallel in N unit and how we can leverage the power of parallel test execution itself.